always step into your dreams, your goals, and your business ventures with the full armor of passion, love, confidence, and humility. But never, never forget to respect your peers. Never forget that. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Toasters, as you come in, go ahead and hit the like button. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. We got some good content over here. Now, I want to touch on the rapper, the actor, now the comedian, T.I., Tip Harris. Now, I'm sure you have heard or seen what's been going on with T.I. Just recently, he uh, addressed a comedian who was on stage that touched on the sexual misconduct allegations, allegations towards T.I. and his wife, Tiny. And T.I. took offense to that. He was at that show. He stepped to her, took the mic, and he addressed her very sternly. Now, I, I can understand that. You know, sexual allegations are no joke. You know, it's no funny matter if you're in the middle of it. I, I get it. I've never been accused of anything like that, but I can only imagine, right? So that's nothing to play with. Even if there's no allegation or even if there's no charges or no conviction, man, that stigma just, just sticks on you, man, like a bad smell. It, it does. So it's a sensitive topic. But T.I. is in that comedy, uh, comedy world now. So is anything off limits when it comes to uh, comedians? Is it? I, I think we got to be very careful about censoring comedians. You know, comedians have always been that muse for the people. You know, every comedian, at least every successful comedian, uh, and that's subjective, what success is, right? But every comedian talks to a demographic, some demographic in the world. And so not every person likes every comedian, but there's a group of people that likes a certain comedian. You know, I'm, I'm the same way. I respect the craft uh, of uh, comedy. I respect stand-up comedians. Man, it's a tough gig. So anybody that can get up there and try to make people laugh, strangers laugh, man, I got to respect it. It takes a lot of confidence. So, you know, T.I. took offense, which I can understand, but you can't censor a comedian. And now he's in that world of comedy. And so, you know, you got to be careful about the energy you put out because now you're in that world and you may touch on something that people don't, you know, feel too good about a topic. Uh, that people may not be ready, you know, uh, to to digest. And so, uh, you know, do you want to be censored? You know, but like they say, it's no fun when the rabbit got the gun, right? And so uh, he took offense. He stepped to it very sternly. And uh, they made amends, it looked like, at, at the end, towards the end. They, they did make amends. But I didn't like him trying to censor her. And I don't know if he has the full full-fledged respect of that world you know you know he didn't uh he didn't have to go through through the uh the basic training so to speak of your normal comedians you know he skipped the line and i'm not mad at that he skipped the line because of his name his fame he was able to skip a line and so i mean we all will want that opportunity to be able to skip a line because what we've done in the past and we've made our mark and so uh people what will bring us towards the, the front of the line because uh, of our deeds from the past in a different round. So I, I get it. I respect it. You know, no, no hate at all towards that. But we got to be careful about censoring comedians. But most of all, we got to respect the craft. You know, whatever realm you're in, whatever business you're in, uh, art, wh whatever you're doing, you got to respect your peers. You, you have to. You got to respect the game or else... Man, that karma will come back on you. Now, recently, T.I., you know, did a, a show, April Fool's Day show in New York, and the brother was booed. You know, he was booed loudly in New York. And, uh, you know, and that's part of the game, too, as a comedian. Comedians get booed. Some of the best comedians still get booed. Man, I heard Jerry Seinfeld, you know, was recently booed a few years ago. It happens. That's why it's a tough game. That's why I respect the comedy game. Uh, but you got to respect your peers. 
man. You respect your peers. You respect the craft. That energy, that karma, that good karma come back on you. And that's not saying you won't fall on your face sometimes. You won't get booed. You won't look bad in, in whatever world you're in, whatever whatever uh, discipline you're in. But uh, you got some, you got some uh, good karma coming your way if you respect what you do and you respect your peers that's in that same game. Uh, and, and we got to learn that, man. No, no matter what we do, we can't hate on each other. That's one thing. And we really got to respect that that person is doing it. Even if we don't like that person, even if we don't like the way that person does their thing, you know, if you're a home builder and, and you don't like the way your competitor builds homes, you can't hate on them because they're doing their thing. If you're a YouTuber, a podcaster, and you don't like someone's content, you can't hate on it. Hit that like button. Even before you hear the content, hit the like button. Because on a base level, you got to have respect. Respect that that person stepped in front of the camera and they were able to speak to strangers and actually open themselves up to be judged. You know, I, I write books. Of course, I'm a YouTuber also. But, hey, everybody can't write a book or everybody don't have the confidence to write a book and put it out to the public to be judged. That's essentially what I did. I allow strangers to judge me. You know, they're looking for double negatives. They, they, they're looking for uh, uh, the content. They're looking for what kind of words am I using? Am I repeating words? They're looking for depth. They're looking at my stand on track, stand on target about what, what my intent was in writing the book. I'm being scrutinized and, and, and really uh, looked upon with the, with the microscope, especially people I know people I have relationships with, they're going to really be looking. So I'm opening myself up to criticism. And that's what artists do, you know, uh, but it comes with the game. Just like with YouTubers, my comment section is open. So people are actually able to judge me and critique me. It's part of the game. Man, I, I go to pages or channels all the time. And before I even hear what they're talking about, before I even know if I agree or like the content, I hit the like button. As soon as I go in, I hit the like button. Because like I said, on the base level, you got to respect the game. You got to respect that person on the base level because they stepped out and they're doing their thing uh, against all odds. The biggest odd is yourself. You know, fighting the demons within yourself. Uh, any self-esteem issue, any, any issues, any self-confidence issues, you're able to fight those things and present something to the public, to strangers. Man, that's a big task. So you got to respect the craft. We got to respect each other, at least on a base level. And uh, there's some comedians, man. I, I'll say, you know, y'all, y'all may ask me about. It. I'm like, man, I don't, I don't really like his comedy. I don't like her comedy. Uh, but I dig that they're doing their thing. Or I like this about them. I like their business acumen. Or I like their hustle. There's something I can find that I like about them, but I just may not be into their comedy, and that's okay. There's millions of people that are into it, but on the base level, I respect the hustle. I respect the game. Man, I told you a story before about when I was a co-owner of a lounge with some young ladies, and uh, we threw a Valentine's Day party. Now, what I didn't mention in that story is one of the female comedians I was uh, managing. I was managing two comedians, a man and a woman. And the female com uh, comedian, I was having her host the party. She's gonna do, she was gonna host. She was gonna go around, tell a little jokes, interview people, uh, present the giveaway. She was gonna do the whole nine. Now, <laughs> man, comedy is a tough game. So earlier in that day, as we were preparing and getting the building together, getting the decorations together, we were setting up, man, it's going to be a big event. She came by, she came by the club and she was like, she used to call me manager. She was like, manager, I need some shoes, you know, uh, because her shtick is, I won't say her name, but it was, uh, she was dowsing up, pretty girl, pretty sexy girl. So that's her, that's her thing, you know, uh, as a comedian, that's her thing. 
So she needs some shoes. She's not the comedian that can wear tennis shoes because that's not her makeup, right? So she needs some shoes. So I was like, how much, how much you need? And uh, I think I gave her like $80. And uh, of course, yeah, yeah, I had an issue with that, but I had to break it down to her. Hey, look, I'm her manager. I got to make sure she's comfortable. I got to invest in her. You know, she's a commodity. This is business. I got to invest in her. If her confidence ain't right, we ain't going to win, period. A comedian has to be confident. And I'll get to that. So, gave her the money. You know, the event is going on. She shows up looking great. And I'm noticing as she's, she's hosting, she's having a few drinks. Drink after drink. Drink after drink. Man, it got to a point where she got off course with the itinerary, how we were supposed to present and lay out the function. And it got to a point where the DJ pulled me to the side. He's like, book, man, this girl's drunk, man. You know, somebody, you, you really need to talk to her. She's drunk. She's messing up. So I pulled her to the kitchen and she was not looking her eyes. She was loaded. She was loaded, man. And uh, I was pissed. I ain't going to lie, I was pissed. And I, I gave her a good tongue lash. You know, didn't cuss her out. Of course not. Didn't call out her name. Just talked very, very, very sternly to her. Because uh, this is my investment. Uh, I have uh, invested money in you. Not just with the shoes. But, you know, I've taken her on, on different open mics and, and other things. And different clubs to get her out there. And uh, so I'm paying for food, transportation. Uh, drinks, I'm paying for this. You know, that's part of a manager. You know, if I can't do that, I shouldn't be a manager, period. Uh, and she's an amateur comedian. So, of course, you know, she ain't, she ain't got money from, from comedy. Uh, you know, that's just what it is. And so I pulled her into the back, gave her a good tongue lash, a stern tongue lash. And I'm like, man, what what's going on? And, uh, she just broke down crying and she said she was nervous. She said she was nervous. She's never hosted and all these people are here looking at her and she has to be funny and she was nervous and she just drank too much. She said she was drinking to calm her nerves and, uh, she just overdid it. And, uh, you know, uh, I gave her a pep talk at that moment and sent her back out there. And she finished up well. Man, that's why you got to respect the game. A lot of comedians do that. A lot of comedians get drunk. A lot of comedians get high to get up there in front of you. So you got to respect the game. I had another comedian. I said I had another, another comedian in the mail. Now, I was managing him first. And uh, actually, no, I was managing her first. And he found out. I was managing her, and he wanted to come on to the team. And he said, man, I don't think she's all that funny. This is what he said. Comedian, talking about another comedian. He said, I don't think she's all that funny. But the issue with him was, I agree, he is, was slightly funny, uh, slightly funnier than her. He, he is, uh, to me. To someone else, they may disagree. But his problem was he was scared to get on stage a lot of times, too. He had to have a few drinks. And I told him, I said, hey, man, you may not think she's funny, but that girl will get on stage. Now, she did mess up hosting. Yeah, she did. But she will she will get up on stage on open mics with no problem. She would. The hosting thing, I think, just, just took her for a loop. And uh, she wasn't prepared for it mentally. But she would get on stage and open mic. He had confidence issues getting on stage. He would have to have a few drinks and maybe do a few other things too. Now, once he was on stage, intoxicated, whatever, drinks and whatever, he was on a roll. He was. It's a tough gig, man. It's, it's a real tough gig. And uh, 
I respect comedians. Uh, I respect the craft. I actually mentioned her in the book, A Toast to the Man. There's a story uh, that took place in a, at, a, at a spot. I was, I had stopped managing her. She hit me up, wanted me to manage her again. So I said, well, I'll meet with you. Uh, and something happened that night uh, when we met up between her and another guy. It was a, it was a, it was a big thing, and things kind of exploded. Uh, also due to what I was going, was going on in my personal life. There was some stuff going on in my personal life and everything just came to a head. So I do mention her. I changed her name in the book, but I do mention her. It's a tough game. And, you know, we got people who will stand on the sideline and, and, uh, comment and critique. And, And that's cool. That's part of the game. But on the base level, you got to respect someone pursuing their goals and their dreams. You, you got to. Man, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of focus. And uh, just on a base level, man, we got to respect one another. I've managed two boxers, two young, two young boys, two boxers. One found out it ain't for him. He quit. The other one, very talented. He went to jail. That's that's part of the game. So I'm into boxing. So I don't like every boxer. I don't like every boxer style. But on a base level, I respect boxers. It takes a lot to get in a ring, to get in a square, a square ring, and take hits. You're trying to hit someone. Someone's trying to hit you. And where you can actually die and where you have to be focused and disciplined before you get in the ring or you could actually die. Man, it's, it's a tough game. But that's anything in life. Anything in life. If you're a beautician, if, uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, if you're an engineer, that's anything you're pursuing. When you're pursuing your passion, man, you're going to stand out and you're going to be open to criticism and critique. That's just part of the game. And so we got to respect one another. And I'm telling you, you you, uh, you fellas and you guys out there who are not pursuing your goals and dreams, do it. Do it. But I just want to tell you, make sure you send out some good energy out there before you step out there. Because all that's going to come back on you. Oh, yeah. Be passionate. Listen, be confident. Do, do all that, man. But always, always respect the craft of what you're doing and respect the people in it. Anything you're pursuing that's outside of the box, that's not part of the norm, is going to be a challenge and it takes a lot of confidence. It does. Hey, as always, love. Peace. If you enjoyed this video and previous videos, go to www dot angel to angel help dot org and donate that's www dot angel to angel help dot org and donate we provide services for the homeless the mentally ill the elderly and the youth